Hey everybody, welcome back to Will Tune for Tacos. Um, we're still looking here at this 1997 Subaru Impreza and I've had a lot of people asking about a build list, a chart, a mod list as it is. Um, I don't I don't typically do mod lists on projects like this, but I can. I just haven't up to this point and I didn't really plan on it because this isn't the only car that will be featured on this channel. It's just the one I'm currently working on. But since people want it, what we're going to do is give it to you. So the car started life as a 1997 Subaru Impreza. This is the Brighton model. So it's the super duper base model. Had crank windows, no sunroof, uh, no power or anything, uh, manual door locks, the works. I mean, it, it had nothing. Um, came with the 1.8 liter, the EJ18, it's a single overhead cam motor. This car in completely stock form, the first time we ever had it on the dyno, it was for a different customer. And the car made 85 horsepower to the wheels. You know, that's a pretty low number, but not really considering what these cars are only rated, I think at 100 to the crank. So you do the math on that, 15% drivetrain loss and there's 85, so it seems about right. Since then, uh, I put an intake and exhaust on it and essentially just uh, did a couple of little mods. Made about 100, I believe, on premium fuel. And then we switched it up a little bit and we put the Elite Engine Management System in. Let me go inside and show you that. So it's a bit of a wire and mess still, uh, mostly because these are all spares. Um, I used the, the full harness that comes with it so it has its own fuse box and everything. Um, there's also still a factory harness in the car, so it's pretty much just uh, cut, truncated, taped off. There is some stuff in the factory harness that I'm still using, the wiper controls, the headlights, all of those sorts of things, but there it is. Um, as far as the engine control, fuel pump control, all of that is completely taken care of with the Elite Engine Management System. Um, this is from Haltech. It's a really, really robust system. It has lots of room to grow. And as I continue to modify the car, this system should grow with it. So, um, like I said, these, these are all spares. They give you a lot of spares. I just have them kind of bundled up right now. Um, down here, you can see if I zoom in, this is the Innovate. Um, I think it's the LM1 or the LC1. I don't know, they keep changing the name. But it's a wideband air fuel control gauge. It's actually not a gauge, it's just a controller that then sends the signal to the, the computer which allows it to function kind of like the factory where it has fuel trims, short term, long term, learning, everything like that. So uh, the heater box is still hooked up, still have heater controls, they still work. So I still have defrost and I have heat if I need it. Um, no air conditioning obviously. The car is fairly gutted. Most of the sound deadening is out. This sound deadening is still here but the rest of the back of the car is out. I have the back seat out. Sorry, my race gear, my helmet, and my jacket are here. But uh, this is just a, basically, it's a, it's not aluminum, it's, I believe they call it dye bond. It's basically aluminum sheeted plastic and it's acting as the firewall from the trunk to the cabin. We have to have a firewall from the trunk to the cabin on this car because when we go into the trunk, the NHRA rules, oh yeah, I'll show you these real quick too. Um, pretty handy little trunk latches. They make it real easy. I hate having to put a key in to get into the trunk when you have stuff in the trunk that you need to use. And stuff being, da 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 da. This was the primary power adder for this car for a long time. Uh, I was running anywhere from a 50 shot to a 100 shot, depending on what point you're talking about. The car didn't particularly like the 100 shot, uh, being as that was essentially twice the power of the motor. It, uh, it just didn't work well. It had some issues. It would kind of fall on its face. Um, it wasn't really tuning related. It was actually nitrous not able to get into the cylinders because nothing was pushing it in. So cylinder fill issue. Um, but anyway, the reason why I have to have a firewall um, surprisingly, the nitrous, if I had a blowdown tube on here that went outside the car, you wouldn't have to have a firewall. But, battery's in the trunk. It's not a sealed battery, it's just a normal uh, lead-acid battery. And so you have to have a firewall from the cabin to the back, as well as a cutoff switch. And this is a push-pull style. My grommet kind of crapped out on me, but you push, 
car is now off, you pull, car is now on. So push off is the required sticker on that. Um, that switch is located down there. You can see, move it here, you can kind of see it. That's just a generic uh, JEGS brand, I believe, switch. Nothing fancy there. Um, fuel pump, there's the fuel sender. These are just extra wires for the factory stuff that went down to the EVAP purge solenoids and canisters. That's all been deleted. But uh, it has a bulkhead fitting for a Dash 6 feed line that is being fed from a Walboro uh, for the 465, the high output E85 pump. It's actually not running E85 in this car. We're running methanol fuel, and I'll get to that in a minute. But that's the feed. This here is the return. Uh, we're not running any EVAP or anything. So close the trunk and go back to the front. I need to take this sticker off. We're Unfortunately, I was trying to do something with big nitrous build for a while, but gave up on that, so we're going with boost. Haltech, Rally Tech, PRU Racing. So I have an NRG steering wheel. Didn't like the factory wheel, it didn't look right in the car. Uh, this is the factory Brighton cluster, so there's not even a tachometer in it. So instead of a tach, I hooked up a shift light. And if you look at this, this is just one of those standard little $4 flashlights you get at uh, the Ace Hardware. You probably get a cheaper one at Harbor Freight, but I kind of modded it here so it gets power from the computer and the computer, the engine management system down there and the wire mess actually turns on the shift light at 60, I think at 6200 it starts to blink at me and then at 6600 it goes solid and red lines at seven so gives me some time to, to know. I had to put some uh, masking tape over it it, uh, the LEDs were crazy bright, um, but it's kind of cool. It matches the orange on the wheel. The car is kind of going for an orange and uh, orange and blue theme. I, I call it a bad action movie. Uh, we got more blue anodized random goodies there. Uh, nothing in the center console. I'll turn that off because the beeper makes me go crazy. But yeah, it still has a dash. This will eventually all come out. The car is gutted other than the dashboard roof liners out. Not all, all the wiring's not out yet. I still got stuff to pull out there, some weight to lose. Uh, the airbag is removed there. That's a good chunk of weight. But there's there's probably another 30 pounds just on this interior getting wiring out and, and whatnot that can be lost from the car. Now, that being said, the car is extremely light, being a Brighton as well as some other stuff that I've done. Last time I had it on the scales, which was before the turbo kit, it weighed 2,260 pounds. Um, it has WRX 16 inch wheels. It actually has snow tires on it. Um, you know, we live in the Pacific Northwest. It's not a street car, but those were the tires that came with it and I've been too lazy to switch them. So that's what's there. Let me get my wrench off here. So let's go back to the engine here. So we are running a Honda radiator. Uh, running the Honda radiator because originally I had the manifold flipped when it was naturally aspirated and I just had the throttle body ducted right to this uh, duct here, which comes under the cowl. I'm sorry, not the cowl, the, the grill. And that just ran up like that, and then the nitrous sprayed in right here into the pipe, and that's how it was running. So uh, having the half radiator works really well. The car doesn't overheat. It's not even running a fan, and what I'm doing to keep it from overheating is some fancy idle control with what's called a rotational idle. So when the temperature gets above about 190 degrees Fahrenheit, the car actually starts to drop individual cylinders. So it'll fire like one, four, you know, one, basically it just starts to drop. The firing order on these is one, three, two, four, but it'll go like one, two, then, so it'll drop, it'll fire, drop, fire, drop, fire, drop, fire, drop, drop, you know, it just kind of moves it around, it's rotational. So, that keeps it from overheating because it's using half as many firing events at the same RPM. And it'll actually, it's surprising how quick it brings the idle temperature back down. So uh, here's the nitrous solenoids. They're not currently ran to anything. Line's just hanging out here. Um, I do need to secure that before I go racing or else they'll get mad even though it's not being used. Um, nitrous feed line, solenoid. Uh, fuel solenoid, but we're not using fuel. I was running a dry shot and then using the engine management to control the fuel. Um, but if I wanted to run 
a fuel solenoid, I could. I actually had it tied in as a purge solenoid and that was working for a while, um, but then it uh, failed. And when a purge solenoid fails, that's no good. It just started spraying nitrous just out of the car. So it's, you can't probably see it right now, but it's just blocked off down there. So for fuel injectors, these are still side feeds. It's uh, their Deechworks 850s, I believe. Um, it's a modded yellow side feed, like out of your 04 to 06 STI. Um, not the best in the world. The wiring's not loomed here yet because I'm probably gonna switch to top feed before long at the next need for more fuel. But right now, that's, what, that's what's in there. Um, fittings, stock fuel rails. I have one pre-made adapter and three, you can't see them, handmade adapters that have a NPT thread in them and then the AN fittings attached to those. So it's pretty cool. It's basically like a fuel rail set up with stock rails. Uh, should be enough fuel to make around 400 horse on methanol fuel. And again, that's not ethanol, that's methanol fuel. And I'm not talking about methanol injection, I'm talking about running straight meth. Um, in one of the videos coming up soon, we'll talk about the reasons for running straight meth as opposed to ethanol or gasoline. Um, fuel pressure regulator, this is a TurboSmart regulator. Um, it's a TurboSmart FPR 2000. It's way bigger than what we would ever need, but it works. Um, I have a four port electronic boost control solenoid in the car. Uh, that gives us pretty dang good control from anywhere from probably around five to thirty hor or sorry five to thirty pounds of boost. Um, as the last video, you know, in the video before it, we talked about this is a Precision 6266 Gen 2, so it's one of their newest um, super awesome turbos. This has capability to make over 700 horsepower on a Subaru. Um, Honda guys and whatnot are making well over 800 on this turbo, but you know they get really cool volumetric efficiency. Um, we're not running an intercooler, methanol, again, methanol fuel acts as a crazy cool, it gives it a crazy cooling ability. Um, reasons for that, again, I'll get into when we do the tuning video, but basically methanol almost acts as an intercooler on its own and running really low boost anyway, there's really not a need for it, plus there's a lot of extra weight with an intercooler, so we're not running one. Uh, coil packs. AEM smart coils give us a ton, 130 MJ of spark energy per coil. We have four of them. They can charge super fast and get the spark to the plugs. Plugs are NGK Iridiums, or I think they're actually two steps colder than what this motor came with. They're temp sevens. Um, they're gapped pretty big. I think it's a 44 thousandths gap, but those those uh, coil packs keep the spark energy up for that kind of gap. The throttle body on this is a WRX two liter throttle body. It's uh, got the WRX 2 liter throttle motor, in, or idle motor in there, and that's why I chose it, because I can control that with the engine management system. It's way less complicated than the factory idle control that came in these cars. Uh, more stuff. This manifold is actually off of a 2.2 liter, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. It was just a hair bigger, as far as the runner diameter, than the uh, 1.8 liter manifold, which I figured would be better for boost. Uh, what else do we have? It is a totally stock 1.8 liter motor, stock composite head gaskets, they're not even multi-layer steel, stock head studs, stock valve train, stock heads. I did go in with the motor in the car, heads on, you know, I basically took uh, paper towels, covered them in Vaseline, shoved them in the holes, and then took um, a, a tool and hogged out a little bit of the material to gasket match it so it matched this intake manifold better to help with flow into the ports. So you could say I have ported intake runners on this head, these heads, but barely a couple millimeters on each runner, nothing big. Um, on the motor, before we did a turbo on the car, um, just motor horsepower was 125 to the wheels, which again, isn't a lot, but for the 1.8 liters, that's pretty good. They don't tend to make very good power. Uh, that's why nobody builds them. But I like the fact that it has essentially the same rods as the WRX. Um, very similar other components. It's slightly smaller bore, which reduces the chance of ringland crack. Um, the cylinder liners are thicker, and all in all, it's a pretty good, pretty good platform to build from. Um, over time, I'll probably switch to a 2.5 liter when when this engine breaks, which it will, and I totally am aware and know that that's going to happen. But really, that's uh, that's all I have for you. Um, Suspension-wise, it has KYB AGX struts with ground control coils. I need to fix the front ones. The sleeve is too tall, so there's you can't really see up in there. 
but there's basically no stroke so as soon as you hit any kind of little tiny bump it bottoms out um, they have d2 pillow ball top hats for camber adjustment and to you know make noise and stuff um, as far as other mods go that's about it so the the point of the car is to be light and by being light it doesn't need a lot of horsepower to go fast uh, oh one one last thing it is a stock stock transmission five speed um, cable clutch it does have an Exidy lightweight flywheel and Exidy clutch I'm not even sure which clutch it is it was in the car before I bought it um, really with this car everything that's on it is stuff that either I had laying around or parts that I was able to acquire through trades or on you know massive discounts and, and whatnot so it's just kind of built as it comes um, as I get something cool like uh, I had the potential or I had the the uh, opportunity to pick up this turbo kit so I did uh, threw it on there because I can not really with any rhyme or reason but just because I can again the nitrous kit that stuff I had from other projects a lot of the fuel system stuff I had from other projects the coil packs etc so it's just kind of been evolving as such and hopefully in the future it it's going to go pretty quick. My goal as it sits right now is to do some 12 second quarter miles. Um, maybe with turning up the boost we might dip a little bit faster, but we'll probably run into drivetrain limitations, axles, transmission, clutches, stuff like that. So we'll just kind of see where it goes. Um, fastest this ran up to this point is a 14.0, and that was on the motor with a little bit of nitrous. So it's got definite room to improve, but it should be a fun process and project and hopefully you guys follow along thanks for watching and soon we'll have another video with will tune for tacos that has more tacos in it and less me talking so thanks for watching bye